Sometimes I make videos that are generally applicable to a whole bunch of people who have a wide ranging problem or something they want to learn about. And sometimes I make videos because there is a specific problem that affects a smaller number of people, but that is a giant pain in the ass. And, uh, and oh, and I'm one of the people it affects. And uh, I figure as long as I'm uh, doing it, I should probably document it for the world. And that is the video we're making today. This is the Newbie Drone B-Brain BLV4. It's their new uh, Binafly quadcopter, and I am trying to review it. But they ship it with an onboard Express LRS receiver, and that Express LRS receiver is not supported yet by the Express LRS project. We'll talk more about what a cluster F that is, but for now, I just want to show you how you can get this damn thing bound and updated. And then I'll whine about how this whole situation came about and whose fault it is. <sighs> I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. Woosah. Woosah. Hey there, folks. It's Joshua from the future here. This video is eight minutes or so long because there's a lot of educational content that I think a lot of people are going to want to know about. I've never been one to just sort of hand you the solution to a problem and say, get the heck out of here, kid. I solved your problem. Go away. I want you to be able to solve the problem, understand why the problem happened, et cetera, et cetera. But for those of you who just want to flash your dang receiver and get your dang quad in the air, you can use the Maytech 2400 RX R24D target to flash to this receiver until Newbie Drone gets their stuff together and gets themselves added to the configurator. If that made sense to you, fantastic. Please leave the video playing because it's really bad for my analytics if you just click away one minute into the video that makes YouTube think you didn't like the video. But uh, for anybody who just was like, what the hell is this guy talking about? That made no sense to me. You should watch the rest of the video for your own benefit, not just for my analytics. Let's do this. The problem with this quadcopter is that they shipped it with Express LRS 2.5, and most people have moved their Express LRS gear to 3. whatever because 3. whatever has been out for a while, and you can't bind between Express LRS major versions. It simply can't be done. The first thing I want to show you is how to bind this guy if you do have Express LRS 2. whatever for some reason, there is a way to bind Express LRS without flashing it. It's uh, it's most people just flash the binding phrase to the receiver, but especially on these little all-in-one boards, sometimes people don't bother doing that. Then I'm going to show you how to get Express LRS 3.0 on it and update it. If you want to skip this part, there are chapter markers in the timeline and uh, ch ch chapter timestamps in the video description. You can just skip ahead. In order to demonstrate this, I've got Express LRS 251 flashed onto this happy model module in a Radio Master Boxer. And you might ask, why am I not using the internal module on my Boxer? Well, number one, that's my daily driver and I want to keep it on 3.0. But number two, there are some modules for which a 2.x target doesn't exist. Most notably, the newer Radio Master Ranger modules. They weren't around when Express LRS 2.5 or 2.x existed and so no one ever made targets for them. If you're in that situation, then you will have no choice but to update this receiver er, to Express LRS 3.0. But if you uh, have a 2.x module and you want to flash it as or bind it as delivered, here's what you can do. I want you to look carefully at this blue LED on the front of the quadcopter. It's going blink, blink, not this fancy, all this nonsense, this LED nonsense. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug and unplug power three times quickly, and that's going to put the receiver into binding mode. This works on any Express L I think it works on any Express LRS receiver, but it's especially handy for ones without a bind button where you want to bind it and you don't want to flash it. So here we go. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to look for it the very first time it lights up and then I'm going to unplug. Because if you wait too long and go too slowly, this won't work. Here we go. One, two, three. Okay, there we go. On the third plug-in, do you see it's going blink, 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 blink? That's binding. So it's now in binding mode. Next, I'm going to go into the Express LRS Lua script on my radio. And I am going to hit bind. And... Sure enough, that LED has gone solid. 
and it did work. I am now bound. And interestingly, I, I wasn't sure this was going to work because there is a bind phrase flashed onto that module. And my understanding is that once you flash a bind phrase to a receiver, it will no longer bind via the bind button or the three plug method. It will just like, okay, I got a bind phrase. It's not going to let you overrule a bind phrase. But it seems like on the module, you can have some quadcopters, there are some receivers that are bound via a binding phrase flashed to the receiver, and you can still bind other ones just by doing the, the three plug method. So we've got it bound, yay, but <laughs> I wanna be on ExpressLRS 3.0. So how are we gonna flash this damn thing? And that is harder than you think because newbie drone isn't in the ExpressLRS configurator. It's not there. But thankfully, Newbie Drone has linked on their product page a link to an ExpressLRS 3.0 firmware that you can download while they get their shit sorted out with the ExpressLRS project. So let's pull that down. Cool. Cool. Really? Really? Newbie Drone. <laughs> um, all firmware can be found on our GitHub page. Okay. Aha. Uh, 2.x and 3.x. Huh? Okay, 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 that worked. So I've got this bin file, and we're gonna go ahead and flash that to the receiver. And I think the easiest way to do that is not to use ExpressLRS Configurator. A lot of times if you're trying to flash via USB or Betaflight pass-through, there's driver issues, there's serial port issues, and it just people find it frustrating, it doesn't work, and it's hard for them to figure out why it does work. I think the easiest way is to flash is over Wi-Fi, and the easiest way to flash over Wi-Fi if you've got a brand new receiver that you've never set up before is as follows. First thing I'm gonna need to do is power down my radio because if the receiver powers up and it connects to a radio, the receiver won't go into Wi-Fi mode. Instead, what we're gonna do is we're gonna power up this receiver. You can, you can kick it into Wi-Fi mode using the ExpressLRS Lua script if you want to. Ooh, oh, that was too loud. And I'm gonna watch that blue LED that shows the status. And you see it's slow blinking now, indicating that it is waiting for connection. And after, I think I set the default timeout to, uh, I don't know what the default timeout is. It's like 20 to 60 seconds. We're gonna see it start to fast flash. And that means that it's gone into Wi-Fi mode. Oh, there we go. We got fast flashing. That means it's in Wi-Fi mode. The next thing I'm gonna do, I'll just close ExpressLRS Configurator. We don't need that. I'm gonna go to my Wi-Fi networks and I'm gonna see a Wi-Fi network ExpressLRS RX. I'm gonna to connect to that. The password is ExpressLRS, all lowercase. And after I connect to that Wi-Fi network, depending on your device, a browser may automatically open and go to this page, or you may need to manually open up a web browser and go to the address 10.0.0.1. And then you'll see this. This is your ExpressLRS receivers web page. They have a web page on them. Sure, why not? Everything does. I'm gonna scroll down here and go to firmware update and hit choose file and then go to downloads and I'm gonna find that bin file that I downloaded. I'm gonna open and update. It will upload that and it'll flash it. To me, this is the simplest, most reliable way of updating ExpressLRS. It's not the one with the least number of steps, but it is like if you can get ExpressLRS configurator to work reliably, it's super easy to just bind and flash or uh, build and flash. But a lot of times people have trouble getting that to work and this is sort of the fallback that seems to work the most reliably. Now, having done that, I am still not bound. I could do the one, two, three binding thing again with an ExpressLRS 3.0 module, and then it would be bound. Um, but I prefer to use binding phrase. And uh, you might think, well, how are you gonna put your binding phrase on the module if, or the receiver, if you can't flash it? Normally you flash a receiver or a module to put the binding phrase on it. Uh, well, ExpressLS 3.0 has an answer for us. Once again, we're gonna wait for that to go fast flashing. And, and now that it's in Wi-Fi mode, we're gonna connect to ExpressLRS RX. And we're gonna go to 10.0.0.1 in our web browser. And now the page looks a little bit different. There's additional options there, including a binding phrase. So I can just go in here and type my binding phrase. That's not my real binding phrase. And then just hit save and reboot and we should be ready to go. And we are bound to my ExpressLS 3.0 module in, uh, in my boxer. Now, uh, who's at fault here? Because this obviously shouldn't happen. ExpressLRS is already complicated enough without this nonsense. And the answer to the question is, Newbie Drone is at fault. For the record, Newbie Drone has 
okay, I'm not going to overstate the case. They have, they are aware that they could have done this better and are working right now to try to resolve the issue. The well, way that this should be done is that a manufacturer who is working on ExpressLRS hardware should contact the ExpressLRS devs who will help shepherd them through the process. But the problem is they need to do this before the hardware is released. Too often, people, manufacturers, take the open source nature of ExpressLRS, they develop hardware, they develop code, they do whatever they need to do, and they put that out in the world. And then users try to go to the ExpressLRS configurator and work with the hardware, and it's not there. The ExpressLRS devs will 100% help you get your stuff included. It needs to be included in ExpressLRS configurator before you release the hardware because otherwise you end up with hardware that is in users' hands that they cannot use. That's stupid and annoying. And ExpressLRS is already annoying enough without this bullshit. So um, by the time you're watching this, perhaps this issue will have been solved and this will be in ExpressLRS configurator, but this is a problem that comes up again and again uh, as manufacturers don't follow the right procedures. And so I hope this video continues to be hopeful. In the meantime, if you would like to know more about ExpressLRS, because you're new to ExpressLRS, you just bought this B-Brain and it came with ExpressLRS, what the hell is that? Well, welcome. Uh, I've got an ExpressLRS starting guide and I'll put a card on screen and you can check it out. It's... This is about how complicated it is. Welcome to the club. See you there.